Who comes to mind when you think of a leader in development? Is it someone like this, a community elder, a frontline worker with a local NGO, the CEO of an international aid organisation, an overseas development worker in the field, or someone like this, a national leader speaking at the UN. All of these images depict leaders in development. It took me a long time to appreciate the importance of leadership in development. It seemed wrong to talk about leadership when the whole endeavour involves partnering with people who are less privileged and more vulnerable and in supporting them to flourish. I didn't like the idea of charismatic leaders who heroically change the world given all of the other things I knew to be involved. Then I learnt that this is not how leadership is understood anywhere anymore. Effective leadership involves bringing together coalitions and collaborations where power is distributed across multiple agents. It's not about any individual heroically saving the day. These images also show us the diverse ways the development is understood and performed. Although the space is very diverse, the leadership theory we cover in this course will be useful regardless of your role within global development. Development is not limited to outsiders providing assistance to underprivileged recipients or poor consumers. Within communities, there are elected members, traditional elders, matriarchs, government officials and religious leaders who actively lead others in their local contexts. Many of these people work independently of any outside assistance whatsoever. Their leadership is crucially important in development. Whether you work for an international NGO, a private sector aid contracting business, a fledgling social enterprise, or volunteer within your own community, development is about change, and social change is about leading people. So it's important to know who leads, how they lead, when they lead, and why they lead change. There are no simple divisions between the different roles people play in development. An increasing number of people from developing countries now work in development in their home countries. And at smaller sub-national scales, people who are disadvantaged themselves relative to others in their country, such as indigenous or minority groups, they too work in development in their own communities. Development organisations are increasingly decentralising their operations to national offices in developing countries and employing more local staff in the process. National governments, especially those in middle income countries, have started to serve their own disadvantaged citizens through development programs. There are also increasing numbers of homegrown, grassroots, indigenous NGOs who are applying for aid funding. Many nationals aspire to international careers in multilateral aid agencies like the UNDP or the World Bank. So the people working in development can see themselves both as helping the poor within their society, but also in need of development assistance themselves for funding, training or foreign scholarships. Development is becoming an increasingly crowded field. Leadership in development is not only about coming up with a new idea or the right policy solution. It also involves brokering new collaborations. There are now many different organisations and individuals working in development, and the numbers keep growing. They all have their own idea of how to bring about change. Most maintain their own success story with clear objectives and measures. So leadership in development often involves working across a number of different organisations and brokering between different people and ideas. It's about getting the right people doing the right things at the right times. Lots of people 
in lots of different organisations at different levels of the system, all working together towards shared goals. Many leaders in development work hard to make themselves appear invisible and then eventually redundant. They measure their success through the success of others rather than their own individual achievement. This is a very effective form of leadership and development. It involves facilitation, leading from behind and supporting groups to reach their own development goals. It also involves deliberately stepping back from the limelight so that others can step forward and take the credit. But the problem of hiding one's efforts is that it can be, it can be difficult for others to learn from you and to follow your example. This course will shine light on the often hidden work of development practitioners so that others might follow their lead. If you are thinking about taking this course, I hope you are ready to be a leader in development, to find out what it takes. In this leadership course, you will learn more about yourself, what values motivate you and give direction to your leadership. How are your personal characteristics likely to help or hinder your leadership? You will have a better understanding of your own potential to lead people and to broker new collaborations between diverse organisations and individuals. And you will walk away with a leadership development plan that you can use to continue your leadership development after the course is complete. In Module 1, Introduction to Leadership, we will define the concept of leadership in developing contexts. In Module 2, Self-Leadership, we will consider the importance of being self-aware and how this has implications for your own leadership journey. In Module 3, we will consider three important forms of leadership, team, transformational and authentic leadership. In Module 4, we will explore the concept of wise leadership and how it can inform wisdom in our leadership practices. In Module 5, we will examine the relationship between leadership and the surrounding context, as well as different styles and roles of leadership. In Module 6, we will focus on adaptive leadership and how it can be used in development to address complex problems. In Module 7, we will discuss power, legitimacy, politics and influence as it relates to leadership in development. In Module 8, we focus on cross-boundary leadership. And in Module 9, we examine the principles and methods of, de of developing your leadership capabilities as you grow into the future. We hope you enjoy the course and look forward to chatting with you in the discussion forums. We also hope, after finishing all of the MOOCs in the MicroMaster series and satisfying the entry requirements, that we will meet you on campus for the full master's program.